Cannabis Common Sense, the show that tells the truth about marijuana and the politics behind its prohibition. Another exciting edition of Cannabis Common Sense, our show is a production of our political committee, the Campaign for the Restoration and Regulation of Hemp, or CRRH, and our affiliated nonprofit organization, the Hemp and Cannabis Foundation, or THCF. We have an exciting show for you tonight. Uh, Henrik uh, Rode is here to talk about his Five Guys in Suits drive for the Million Marijuana March. Tim Pate is here. He'll be on our panel taking your questions along with myself. Hey, Tim. And uh, uh, he'll be providing musical accompaniment. That's why he's holding the guitar, as he usually does. But uh, we have more. Stay tuned. We have some excerpts from last year's Million Marijuana March. Get you all excited about coming down and marching with us next Saturday on May 3rd. But uh, as we always do, let's bring on the infamous Dancing Cannabis Leaves. Hemp News segment for you tonight. We'd like to announce that down in California, they have an exciting bill in front of the state legislature. It's California House Bill 2279, which would prohibit employers from firing medical marijuana patients who test positive for medical marijuana. So if you're down there in California, we urge you to contact your state legislators and urge them to support House Bill 2279 to prohibit firing medical marijuana patients who test positive for medical marijuana off the job. We also want to report a case up in Washington in Port Orchard in Kitsap County, Washington. There's a lady up there, one of our patients, uh, a married couple, Pam and Bruce Olson. They uh, were growing a limited number of cannabis plants as specified by our clinic and the Washington Medical Marijuana Law. They only had six plants each in the flower cycle when the police raided their home last year. And even though Pam Olson is dying and has about a year and a half to live, uh, the police decided they were going to prosecute her for this tiny garden, saying that it was... Uh, over the amount they had. Now I think what they really do is covering up for their own malfeasance and culpability. They actually poisoned Pam and Bruce Olson's puppies as they went in and then they, they once the po dogs were in convulsions there they told them that if they just answer a few questions then they could call veterinarians to help them. So I'm just wondering if this is a tactic up there by this WestNet drug task force in poisoning people's pets to uh, force them to uh, confess or to turn over evidence to the state. Uh, and they are going ahead with this prosecution. The Olsons had to sell their home of 25 years and uh, uh, they're living in an RV on a friend's property now. So even though these very sick people were growing medical marijuana with the permit, they went out of their way to comply with Washington's medical marijuana law, the police and the prosecutors in Kitsap County are still prosecuting them. And this past week on Wednesday, Judge Miles ruled that they could not even present a medical marijuana defense in this case. He, he excluded them from even mentioning medical marijuana. The Olson's attorney, Scott Moriarty of Tacoma, filed a motion to reconsider, and the Washington State ACLU filed an amicus brief with Judge Miles there in Kitsap County, Washington, to uh, try to force her to allow medical marijuana defense to take place. Uh, <clears throat> so stay tuned. We'll have more news about the Olson case up in Kitsap County, Washington on future shows. So how are you doing, Tim? I am well this week, Paul. How are you? Well, you know, outside of being just really, really angry about that story I was just talking about and how they're torturing sick and dying people up there, uh, I'm doing well. I'm a little surprised that a, a, a 
legal uh, certified, you know, appointed judge of the state would not allow a law that was passed by the voters of that state, and and you know, and 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 not allow medical marijuana into that case in the courtroom. That that's you know, a bit disturbing to me as well. It's unfortunately, it's a pretty common case in some of the smaller counties in Washington State. Now, last year, the state legislature passed a bill to uh, it's a uh, Senate Bill 6032, which uh, this mandates that the State Department of Health come up with a, a number of plants and an amount of cannabis a patient can grow. Right now, Washington's medical marijuana law says you can have a 60-day supply. Right. So the Health Department has had a series of hearings and are uh, working on a draft report. Uh, an early re release of that draft came about through a Freedom of Information Act. Uh, of course, they say they're not going to abide by this. It's an early draft, but their early draft said that they would allow patients to have 35 ounces and a 100 square foot canopy without limiting or naming the number of plants. So that would be a pretty generous, That's generous. better than, than Oregon's. It is better than Oregon's. So We're at we will see if that comes about in talking to Pam Burkhardt at the Washington Department of Health. She's in charge of issuing that report. She said it's preliminary and that that number is probably much higher than what the ultimate report will go to the legislature in July. Well, no offense, but all that's just pissing in the wind if the courts don't follow up and, and, and not allow the the the, uh, the uh, legal people out there, in other words, the cops, to come in and raid people. I mean, you know, if they're going to come in and raid people, what good is the law if, if, if the cops are going to, you know, ignore exactly. that and go ahead and raid people? You know, that last Sunday on 420, well, we had a very successful volunteer meeting at our office, and I want to apologize to the 120 people who came to our hemp stock volunteer meeting. I went up to a meeting in Washington with activists up there, and there's a group of AIDS activists in ACT UP that, if the judge doesn't change her opinion, I think are going to disrupt this trial. Good. Well, yeah, uh, you know, I that's, uh, it's I have a lot of contempt for what the judge is doing up there, too. Well, I'm sure that that judge will be pointed out. In the near future, and and more than once, when people act like that, they, they should be pointed out. They, yeah. they really should. That's just my opinion, and I'm going to stick to it. I think I'm going to sing a protest song. This is actually one of those songs that I wrote because of a, a man who's one of my heroes, Jack Herr, uh, who wrote "The Emperor Wears No Clothes," and and uh, it's just one of those. He's one of those voices in the in the wilderness for many years, and then a few people heard, and a few more people heard, and finally a whole bunch of us heard. And anyway, that's what this song is about. It's called Come Climb the Mountain with Me. Well, come climb the mountain with me. Come see what we can see Come climb the mountain with me And then we will all be free The sun men are born to lead The sun men have destiny Some men plant the seed And some men let it free
So come climb the mountain with me Come see what you can see It's just time for the world to know The emperor wears no clothes Come climb the mountain with me And I'm sure that you will see It's time for the world to know The emperor wears no clothes The emperor wears no clothes The emperor wears no clothes And uh, we will have Mr. Jack Hare and Mr. Tim Pate at the Portland Hempstock Festival coming up on September 6th and 7th. And as we mentioned last week, we just lined up uh, the daughters of Willie Nelson and Arlo Guthrie in a band called Folk Hute. It's Kathy Nelson and, uh, no, Kathy Guthrie and Amy Nelson in Folk Hute, which is, uh, boy, they have some humorous songs, i got to say that. Uh, you go out there and listen to a few of them. And I understand Amy Nelson also helped write Willie's new hit, A Peaceful Solution, which is a very inspiring song. Well, good for her. Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, I did, yeah. Well, I'll ask her about that next time. I'm sure she'll play it at Hempstock. I'll, I'm going to oh, ask. Cool. Oh, good. That's for sure. Good. Well, I want to welcome you, Tim. And, Henrik, how are you doing? I'm just doing great. Good, doing good. Great. We are here live. Uh, it is the 25th of April. And if you're watching us on the 25th of April, you can call us at 503-288-4448. That's 503-288. 288-4448. We're taking your phone calls about medical marijuana, industrial hemp, and ending adult marijuana prohibition. We have a caller. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Hi there. Hello. Um, I had a question about capsules. Yeah. Um, I, I've recently gotten certified, but I'm not real sure how... To, I know I'm supposed to use leaf, but I'm not real sure how to make the capsules. It's pretty darn simple. You know, we have capsule kits at our office, and I can tell you we have right here on the panel Someone who loves his capsules and probably wants to talk about them. Hey, Henry. I absolutely want to talk about capsules. I love the capsules. Um, I had a little bout of bronchitis last year, and uh, it's still, if I smoke too much, it, it hits my throat pretty hard. And smoking can't be a good thing for you. So I, I, I quit smoking. They found it causes, guess what, bronchitis with yeah, marijuana. It turns out. Um, so I really got into the capsules, and using leaf is really good because leaf has the cannabidiols. And you can uh, activate those cannabidiols by heating it up in the oven to 220 degrees for just a couple of minutes. Uh, you can also, minutes. however, use the buds, because I use the buds in my capsules because I like the THC, which is something that goes way back with me. Um, <laughs> me too. Me too. I like the THC. What can I say? So I use the buds uh, to make the capsules. And you don't want to heat it up for too long because that will vaporize the THC, but you do want to heat it up enough to do the cabin to activate the cannabidiols to, uh, what is it, de decarboxylize the cannabidiols. Exactly. It strips the carbon dioxide molecule off. Yeah, I spent a long time learning how to say that. Um, okay, so only a couple of minutes at 225. No, no, about 15 to 30 minutes. 15. Oh, I thought you said yeah. a couple of minutes. I mean, I'm talking about with leaf. Maybe with leaf. With leaf. Yeah. I want leaf for pain. Well, because what I find is I can use the vaporized cannabis too. After I vaporize mm -hmm. it, it, it goes. It still has most of the CBD, and depending on how long you vaporize it, it still has some of the THC, maybe most of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then it, you just grind it, it up into a very fine powder and put it into the capsules. Exactly. Exactly. And there's a machine actually called called the Cat and Quick. You can get it online, or you, we also have them at the clinic, where you can do like 50 capsules at a time, and it's not and it's real easy. It's real ah. easy, yeah. Yeah, it gets a little tiring stuff, stuffing each one of those capsules. Stuffing each yeah, one. Well, really. it's not quite as tiring helps. stuffing 50 at a time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for your help. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah, and with leaf, you just grind it up and cook it for 15 to, to 30 minutes, and uh, then you put it into those capsules. It's yeah, I found that, that when you do that with the bud, it makes your house smell really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it doesn't vaporize a, a heavy amount. What happens is the terpenes come off, and those are what mm -hmm. really smelly. But the, can the the THC doesn't vaporize very much till it gets over 320. It doesn't. Oh. Okay. Yeah, well, and good. then I like to vaporize my cannabis to extract the THC in, in vapor at about 360 to 365. Once you get up to 390, it causes other things to start to vaporize, which aren't good for you and make you cough. So there you have it. There you go. So if you're watching on the 25th of April, 2008, uh, show, I think it's 447? 
Is that it? Yeah, 447? Closing on four. Then you can call us at 503-288-4448, and we'll be taking your calls. So, Tim, I know you're gearing up for the Imperial Hemp Fest and the Seattle Hemp Fest. And the Seattle Hemp Fest. You're really working on that one, the Imperial Hemp Fest, a lot now. Working on all of them, actually. Each uh -huh. one is requiring. You know, we've got volunteers on every level. We have people and right. staff working, and, and uh, uh, just a, we're making contacts with a lot of bands, just like we've announced with Hemp Stock, some of the acts that we've been able to land over the last mm -hmm. few weeks. And, well, you and, know, uh, THCF, our nonprofit organization, is now sponsoring the Imperial Valley Hemp Fest. You're one of the Fest. sponsors down there, yes. Down there. We're one of the major sponsors, and that's coming up in November. That will be the we first signed full on in November. Yes. And got our our booth space for the Seattle Hemp Fest as one of the major sponsors that's there. The big grand and of course, here in Portland, we are the, the, main the founders and the organizers of the uh, Portland Hemp Stock Festival. So you're you're just as busy as I am. In We're there, staying aren't you? really busy. And more and more <laughs> events all the time. Well, these are important events. It's it, I, I've always found. Uh, Whenever I'm in front of, of a couple of hundred thousand people, all of the same mind as me, it, it's very empowering. Yeah. It, it simply is very empowering. Really when is. you know they all come from your hometown, or, and they're all right there, and they all believe the same thing you do, and they're all fighting for the same thing. It, it just and it brings makes people you want out, to comes do together more. as a community, and you get to have a good time and listen True. to good music. Yes. And see and a here's lot some of great things. speakers. Hey, we have a caller. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Yeah, hi. Um, Howdy. I, I wanted to know, is tomorrow the meeting for Oregon Normal? Uh, no. It's not? Am yes. I wrong? Oh, it is. Oh, no, he's wrong. I'm wrong. It is. Oh, it's the fourth meeting. In fact, the one tomorrow, now that you now that I, it all comes pouring back, tomorrow they'll have uh, uh, a speaker from the Oregon Medical That's Marijuana right. Program. That's right. There to ex explain the changes that go into effect on July 1st. As I understand it, patients and guards. I had another question about sure. the uh, that meeting. Um, yeah. The the first one, there was like almost no clones. Actually, there wasn't enough for everybody, but there was. There were. There was. Oh, I'm, there, okay. I'm usually standing there making as Get one there of the earlier. And, yeah. And there will be more clones. Yeah. I, sometimes there's okay. plenty. Sometimes there's just not enough. And then so this it's going to be a little so. class thing too, and and. A couple yeah, of clones, or you there's going to be questions for this lady from the Oregon Medical Marijuana Program Office, uh, talk, so you can she can answer about these changes to the program. I have a couple of questions myself that I, I'm looking forward to asking. Hey, I, I got a, a comment too about that sure. case you were talking about earlier. Yeah, about the Olson's case in Washington, and then poisoning their dog and uh, torturing their dogs. They're to, puppies. Uh, these yeah. were little puppies. You know, these, these people are satanic. I mean, yeah, when are it's we going to take our country back? You and, know? you know, they, they, I'm sure these guys, after work, they go and they make jokes about it. I mean, I don't have any proof of that, but I can just see people with that mentality. If they're going to stoop to something hey, like know, that. I was homeless on the street uh, with, you know, a bottle in my hand because, you know, hemp wasn't legal, and that's what I started out with years before, and then mm -hmm. alcohol was legal. Anyway, I became an alcoholic. And I know how these uh, cops are. You can be compliant, and they'll still, you know, they'll beat you and lie on their report. Oh yeah. And uh, anyway, you know, we're it's like we're we have our tail. It's like I feel like I have my tail between my legs. You know, begging, oh, just tax us for it, and <laughs> and and just well, you know, you know, it's not. Don't, it, don't don't look at it as submission because it isn't. I mean, what we want to do is legalize it, and if. What our our proposal, which would tax the sale of it, you know, so we can comply with international treaties, and I'm talking about our Cannabis Tax Act proposal. You can find more about it through our our uh, web portal at hemp.org. That's H-E-M-P dot O-R-G. But what it would do is it would allow anyone to grow their own without a license. It would make the whole medical great. marijuana permit thing obsolete because anyone could grow their own and patients could get it at cost through pharmacies once the Cannabis Tax Act takes effect. And we're going to start circulating mm -hmm. that this summer. Madeline Martinez of Oregon Normal and I are the chief petitioners on it, and I'm excited uh, to, to build support behind that. Anyway, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. But, yeah, it just outrages me, too, to have to deal with this. You know, I'm, I'm called in to testify. I thought for certain when Dr. Orvald, our Washington doctor, and I went in for an interview a few weeks ago with the Kitsap County prosecutor, when we left there, we were sure the case was going to be thrown out. And to find out they're going ahead to prosecute this poor, sick and dying woman, you know, for doing something that 
was completely legal under the law, right. and that now they're not even going to let her mention that there is a medical marijuana law. Right. Boy, that, I don't it, get that. It, it, it I do not get We're that. We're looking at advertising in the local Kitsap County paper as well to bring it more to people's get, attention. Get more attention for it. it we have another it. caller. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Good evening, gentlemen. How are evening. you this evening? Good. Pretty well. Good. Say, uh, Paul, a couple of weeks ago you had some crank caller on there that uh, was talking about uh, the uses of... Well, I had called in talking about uh, what the possible uses were for one acre of hemp. Right. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned several different things that could be made with it. Well, I, yeah. I, was, I was watching a program on, uh, I believe it was PBS, and they were talking about uh, uh, ethanol and how right. much corn is being devoted, or mm -hmm. diverted, I should say, right. into making ethanol. Yes. And uh, one of the things I learned in this program is that for one acre of Iowa corn, uh, they get about 10,000 pounds of biomass. Uh-huh. Okay, now part of that biomass, obviously, is going to make ethanol. Part of it's going to be silage for animal feed, which is putting it into the food chain. Right. Uh, another one, a big one, is corn sweeteners. Right. Because uh, corn is, is mostly starch, uh, which is mostly sugar. Right, right. Uh, in other words, that high fructose corn syrup we see in everything that, uh, uh, you know, our body can't even really tell it's there. You you cannot get, your, your stomach won't register if you're eating high fructose corn syrup. Absolutely. You won't and get full. That brings to mind another point. Uh, but let me finish my list here. last thing uh, was green, like popcorn, cereal products, etc., it puts it into the food chain, just like the corn sweeteners do. Right. And one of the interesting things I saw about in this program was the fact that they were talking about we are what we eat. <laughs> and uh, they were commenting on how much uh, of a causative factor corn in the food chain has upon diabetes. Yes. And this is one of the reasons that diabetes is going up. Yeah, is that there's so much corn. Absolutely. Now, Corn is not good. Where... Hemp seed oil has just the opposite. Absolutely, effect. and that was that was the point I wanted you to talk about. Is once again uh, talk about uh, what all you can get from an acre of uh, hemp. Thanks. You know, I, I appreciate you calling in because I really do enjoy educating people about this. So pretty soon everybody will know this, and I I can just quit saying it, but I will keep saying. It. You know, an acre of hemp. The main product you get from an acre of hemp, if it's grown uh, most uh, productively, is it's grown for seed. And so wild feral hemp in southern Illinois, according to an article in the Midlands Naturalist, published back in 1975 out of Notre Dame University, the article was called Feral Hemp in Southern Illinois. And in that article, they said that an acre of hemp uh, feral hemp in southern Illinois produces over 8,000 pounds of seeds, a little bit more than four tons of seeds. If you press hemp seed oil, you get hemp oil, like these little capsules. We'll be looking at hemp seed oil things. I take seven of these little hemp seed oil capsules every day for the omega-6, 3, and 9 that's in them. But uh, if you press your four tons of hemp seed, the remaining, uh, you get 300 gallons of hemp seed oil and Three tons are 6,000 pounds of hemp flour. This stuff right here. And we can go over. Here's the hemp seed oil. You press it, the seeds, and you get three tons of the flour, 300 gallons of the oil. Now, not only is the oil very nutritious and healthy for you and has all these things you don't normally get in our diets today, but it is also uh, a fuel. You can pour it right into any diesel engine with no conversion to today's diesel engines and drive your car on it. So you get basically six barrels of fuel, six, if you compare it to barrels of oil, you get six, or six barrels of oil or six barrels of diesel fuel or food and three tons of high protein flour. Then the other products are from the stems. You get six to ten tons of bast fiber. That's the outer bark of the hemp stalk that's used to make canvas, rope, lace, and linen. And you get four tons, another... Uh, 4,000 or 8,000 pounds of herd fiber, the interior part of the stock, which can be used to make paper and building materials. So once again, 300 gallons of oil, three tons of high protein 
hemp seed flour, uh, six to seven, ten tons, six to ten tons of bast fiber for canvas, rope, lace, and linen, and 25 tons of hemp herd fiber for uh, can, uh, paper and building materials, all from the same acre. Now, in terms of the oil production, hemp seed oil is three times more productive than any other seed oil crop. The next most productive seed oil crop is canola at about 115 to 120 gallons per acre. Then there's sunflower seeds and soybeans, and they both range uh, in uh, the 100 to 110 gallons per acre. Hemp seed oil produces 300 gallons of oil. Any of those can be used as biodiesel or diesel fuel. And so I think that's the real key to marijuana prohibition is the petrochemical industries realized that with new machinery at the turn of the last century, the price of hemp was going to fall and their petroleum industry was going to be run into some very steep competition. So they created this reefer madness myth to uh, criminalize hemp, and that's how they did it. Indeed, I'm glad you mentioned who the uh, who the culprit really was. I mean, everybody knows about Anslinger, but he uh, had backers behind him to make this happen. Anslinger's so. uncle was Andrew Mellon. He was married to uh, a niece of Andrew Mellon, who was the Secretary of the U.S. Treasury through four presidencies from 1918 up to 1933. And Andrew Mellon was also a key backer of several different petroleum companies. So they realized that cannabis was going to displace a lot of petroleum with the introduction of new machinery. And I've always said here on this show, and I'll say it again, marijuana prohibition is not about drugs. It's not about cannabis. It's about money and the continued centralization of economic and political control. And that's what the petrochemical industries, uh, that's why they came up with this whole reefer madness myth and it's illegal today and so many hundreds of thousands of people are tortured with uh, incarceration for a, a beneficial herb. Absolutely, and that was the point I was wanting to make is with this with this person that uh, made a smart aleck remark about uh, how you were making an unfair comparison uh, because you were talking about hemp that's grown for industrial purposes and uh, hemp that's grown for medicinal purposes, and like you were talking out both sides of your mouth, and I'm thinking, no, 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 mister, open up your mind and it's, think It's the about same this. plan. It's you know, this. T -H there's a lot of people who want to say industrial hemp is different, and there are some strains of industrial hemp that are allowed in Canada and Europe that are bred with less than 1% THC. When they breed out the THC, they breed out the flowers. When they breed out the flowers, they breed out the seeds. Uh, the maximum seed production from that low THC hemp is 1,200 pounds, and it averages about 600 pounds per acre. But the higher THC strains, 3 to 5 percent, produce a great deal more, 20 times more. Absolutely. <laughs> so you were making the point then that, uh, that in fact, there was no difference. It says THCF behind you and uh, Tim there. Yeah. That's the, the hemp. hemp and Cannabis Foundation. The That's hemp. one of the reasons... We tied them together, and uh, like I said, there's some people in the hemp movement that don't think that's right, but we try to educate them that it is. Well, I just I hope that we just gave them a little education there, Paul, about the, the difference between an acre of corn uh, and what it's worth and an acre of uh, uh, hemp. hemp. Well, you know, another thing about corn fuel production, my understanding is it takes almost as much energy yes. to produce corn ethanol as uh, the energy that you know comes from burning uh, corn ethanol. Bingo. It's a lot more productive to take sugarcane waste uh, or bagasse is what they call that uh, and uh, convert that into uh, ethanol. Have you noticed the price of grains in the world lately? Yep, it's been driven up by the cost of biofuels. That's why we need hemp. Yep. Much more productive and uh, you know, once we're running the majority of our cars on this hemp seed oil, we'll see world hunger wiped out. Absolutely, and, and I mentioned earlier that, that uh, corn is starch. Uh, yeah. Hemp seed, on the other hand, is oil protein. and protein. I wonder yeah. what we'd look like if we all ate hemp seed. I think we'd be a lot healthier. There's no doubt about that. I think you're right. Thanks, gentlemen. Have a good night. Thank Talk you. Thank you. I found I've felt a lot healthier since I've started taking hemp seed oil daily. There you go.
yeah, it's uh, made a big difference. Okay, so we have a film clip we're going to roll here in just a minute. Hey, we want to remind our viewers that next weekend, come up real quick in eight days as we take this live on May the 3rd, 2008, right in downtown Portland, there'll be a million marijuana march. There's also a march in Seattle and in Denver and all over the world, 200 different cities around the world. There will be a million marijuana march. There'll be over a million of us out in the streets around the world. So I urge you to come out here if you're in the Portland area. Come down to Pioneer Courthouse Square. You want to be there about 11 a.m. The march starts at high noon. If you're up in Seattle, you go to Volunteer Park. And they're going to be protesting about arresting medical marijuana patients in the march up in Seattle. And uh, uh, call our Denver office for more information about the, the Denver march. So um, I think we're going to roll a film clip now. that we're law-abiding citizens and that we respect the law. So let's... Relax it and tax it. Medical marijuana gotta have it. Relax it and tax it. Justice. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious. Legalize it. Legalize it. Legalize it. March. You were there. You fake taped that. I, I, I took that. I, I took my handy cannabis cam down there. All around. You that was, that was a fun. A, that was uh, a fun dance. event. It was. A fun we had we had what about four or five hundred people out of the million that I showed up for that. I counted about four hundred and twenty. About four hundred and twenty people. <laughs> that sounds about right. Maybe we can double that this year. That'd be great. I'll tell you what though. I'm on kind of a campaign here, because after that event, I kind of had the feeling like um, I don't know. I got nothing against you know slightly balding, slightly overweight middle-aged white males in tie-dyed t-shirts mm -hmm. uh, in denial. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to be one myself someday. But um, what I'm hoping for this year is that we can put just one small contingent in that parade, and I'm calling it Five Guys in Suits. So what I'm looking for it's is... It's kind of like a men in black thing. 
Um, not quite. Yeah, just, 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 I just want to. I just want to present, you know, kind of the image that we're not all still wearing our tie-dyed T-shirts, and it's a celebration. I want everybody to come out and celebrate. But I just want like five guys to come You're out. You're wearing suits. a suit. I am wearing a suit, so that's I'm one. wearing a suit. You, you are. know, there I'm we not go. March actually, I've developed. We, we're actually. We also. One of our cameramen today, Wolfie, also showed up. Just, just to be in support. There, Can we get a He's... shot of Wolfie in his suit? Is that is that possible? Is there enough light over there? <laughs> anyway, um, so Wolfie showed up in his suit today. This is the rare. Oh, there he is. Yes, 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 hold your camera, Wolfie. Wolfie. In his suit. There we go. He's got the tie on and yeah. everything. His old uh, symbol of oppression tie there. Uh, get on and, your camera. Uh, so I have also developed a computer graphic. Okay. Uh, to to demonstrate our progress in this drive, we are like That's almost tech. almost halfway to our goal of five guys in suits. We got me and Wolfie. We need just three more guys that are going to show up at this parade wearing you know basic suit and a tie, just to let folks know that you know we're really serious about this and and we're willing to walk down the street wearing our ties to demonstrate for medical ties marijuana. and tie dyes. Yes, ties and tie dyes. That's I like that. We'll yeah, use that, that works. Ties that and tie dyes. You must be so serious. But if you got a tie dye suit, I am serious. You made a I chart. Tried to be serious. I made it on. Yeah, that is impressive. I worked hard on that. I did. Yeah, I see that. All right. So, so there we go. We need three need more guys more to guys show up in suits. suits. And we got five. Even if you don't want to go in a suit, though, you're welcome. Absolutely. That's true. Let's see. We've got another caller who's very, very patiently been standing by. Hello, caller. You're on our show. Hi there. I Hi. really totally enjoyed it. It's wonderful. Oh, cool. Oh, thank and you. And the five guys in suits, I love it. You know, I mean, I really think... <laughs> you don't have to be a guy. Uh, well, I don't... Yeah, I don't have a suit. Okay. But, you know, you gotta have I don't a suit. think you should try to be a guy either. <laughs> I don't want to be a guy. <laughs> I understand. I kind of like it, but it's not cold, for everyone. So my deep voice is normally deep anyway, but it's really deep. But, no, I think um, the suit thing, I think we really do... As we do have fun, and we have so much, um, oh, artistic and wonderful talent, and we're colorful people, but sure. I think that the credibility factor is really important, and the fact that Paul shows up every week in a suit and tie. and Tim I got my peace tie better. this week. Pardon? My peace tie with these peace symbols I found in Seattle about 15 years ago. Yeah, well... Yeah, My peace, peace is about 15 years old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, I called with something that is a, a little serious after all that nice levity, but it's to kind of follow up on the last two callers and, you know, the, the historical uses of hemp that we just go over and that we've known about and that they've known about and, you know, how unfair it is. Um, <clears throat> that's all true. My concern is that Big Pharma is out there waiting in the wings and maybe even... Oh, they're, they're doing more than waiting and, in the wings. And, and, get this, my fear is Monsanto is diligently working on a way to genetically engineer this seed and uh -huh. totally screw it up for their I think own you're right. benefit. I think you're right. You know, Big Pharma has been working in cannabis. They're, all the major pharmaceutical can companies right now are working on cannabinoid... Uh, based drugs. In fact, Vioxx was one way to turn off the cannabinoid receptor. What they found, though, is that they turned off the cannabinoid receptor. They also caused heart attacks and things like that. So, yeah, and uh, you know, but I'm surprised they even talked about those people. You know, yeah. they're out of study. Okay, but <laughs> I, you know, the the pharmaceutical industry really scares me. It really frightens me. But Monsanto frightens me too because. They are in Frank, into Frankenfood. And, you know, they were even talking about growing medications because yeah. it's cheaper than labs. So how do we, I mean, are we, are we on this? Are we on yeah. focus? Because, you know, I worry about the, the purity of my medicine because I've just learned how important uh, in my later life, how important organic food is, how we really be careful what we eat, right. how much they've really destroyed the food supply mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I don't want them to do that with this uh, you know, plant right now there are so many different strains of cannabis out there that are available in through the seed banks I mean literally I know of about a thousand different strains and I think what we're going to find eventually is it's the high THC strains that produce the most seed oil and uh, seed protein. They have a lot bigger seeds in high uh, THC indica, and I think we'll see they can produce more 
seeds per acre. But you know we can't do that research yet. Okay. Uh, what, so we've got some strains, that, a thousand or more, that are locked in before uh, prohibition is going to come to an end. Now, once prohibition ends, there are a lot of dysutopian possibilities in our future. You know, there are breakthroughs yeah, in genetics. Seeds, okay. Yeah, there are breakthroughs in genetics. There are breakthroughs in nanotechnology. There are breakthroughs in artificial intelligence that all seem to be converging into a future, maybe within most of our lifetimes, yeah. that uh, could be pretty horrible if we don't work hard to expand individual rights and curtail corporate rights. Yes. And so that's part of what our uh, work is about. And uh, that's one of the things that I think cannabis is here for. You know, some people, uh, there's a book out there by this fellow, Steve Cubby, who ran as libertarian for governor in California called uh, uh, Right to Consciousness. And he talks about how cannabis Lighten, enlightens consciousness. It could be the plant kingdom's way to reach out to us humans and say, hold it, guys. You need to change. Yeah. And so uh, maybe that's true. Maybe it's not. Either way you look at it, uh, there's a lot of potential dangers in the future, and we're all going to have to stay vigilant and be ready to fight for our liberty. Right, and I'm going to count on you to keep an eye on things. I'm trying. I'm and trying the best keep I can. Us alert because, you know, I mean. I think I'm getting better as time goes by. I yeah, keep trying. I think, you anyway. are too. I think you are. I think you're doing a really good job. And um, I just, I love you guys. And, you know, I just, I want to have the world turn out okay. And, yeah. and, I mean, they've taken so much away that I really want them to leave this alone. And, you know, if there is spirit really looking out, maybe spirit will say, oh, no. You're not messing with that. Yeah. <laughs> You've messed with that enough. So with that, I'll say good night, and you guys carry on, good and night. thanks for your Friday nights. You bet. Thanks. You're thanks welcome. for watching. Stay tuned. I like the way that she turned that phrase there. I just want the world to turn out okay. I Me like, too. I like the turn of phrase Me too. there. That was Me nice. Too. I think I'm ready to go into our little show-and-tell phase here. Oh, cool. You know, I know that... Lately, our web guy has been taking our show-and-tell phase and transferring it into little video clips on medicalmarijuanamd.org, one of our sites that oh, you can get through, through hemp.org, H-E-M-P.org. And so here we go. We've got a few different things here. This is actually a box and a bottle set. It's old. It's about 105 years old. It's uh, made in New Jersey, and it's Reven, Re, our father, D. Ulysses, Cough medicine, good for coughs, cold, bronchitis, whooping coughs, asthma, hay fever, and all afflictions of the throat and lungs. And it's uh, been, according to the literature that's falling apart that it's been coming with, it's uh, been found to bring relief to the most stubborn cases among friends and their children. And it's found in all cases to be a health builder and strengthening remedy and wonderful medicine within the reach of all, so no one should be denied its restoring compounds according to this falling apart literature that comes with it. But Dr. Elise, I mean Father, excuse me, Father Elise's cough medicine is also embossed on the back with Father Elise's. And down here at the bottom, it says what's in it. And I don't know if you can see that. We're going to, oh, that's really good. You're doing a good job. Uh, it contains opium, Indian cannabis, heroin, alcohol, and chloroform. So, Father Dealissi will give you a good dose of <laughs> mixture of opium, Indian cannabis, heroin, alcohol, and chloroform. Mm. So, Lips so what is what, good. What is yeah, the bonus? It says right here it's used by Father Elissi for years, and it also says over here it's never known to fail. It's never been known to fail. I'm so, sure it has So, what does a bottle like that cost? That's you know, full of our medicine. foundation <clears throat> got it for a little bit over five hundred dollars, and it's sealed, and we will never open this because it's you part of our museum. A shot? Never mind. <laughs> We're turning you down. We're not opening that. No, no, this is a museum piece. We're not opening it. Right next door. Now, this is 1905, circa 1905, Father D'Alessi's Magic Cough Remedy. Right next to it, we have a tincture bottle from the 1880s. We've seen this in the past. It's got the label under glass or lug. Next to it, my fa one of my favorite supplements, hemp seed oil. Uh, I order this through Hemp Oil Canada, and it's very nifty. As we were talking about, you can get 300 gallons of oil, and the byproduct of that is this flour. 
and high protein flour. Prairie emerald hemp flour is protein enriched, gluten free, whole grain flour that imparts the nutty flavor of hemp into a wide variety of baked goods. Hemp flour is an excellent source of protein containing all the essential amino acids. Hemp flour is very high in dietary fiber and a good source of energy for people on the go. So there it is, hemp flour. Next, we see hemp nuggets. Now these have been hulled. These are actual hemp seeds that have been roasted and the outer crunchy little coat's been taken off. And it's a lot like a cross between cashews and walnuts or pecans. It's got this initial cashewy, buttery flavor and then it kind of after flavor of, of pecans or walnuts. And, and Tim, you want to talk about, you got our, our thing of hemp seed, hemp seed milk here. This is really good stuff. You introduced this to me a few weeks back and, and you've been bringing it on the show and I got to I take one it. home a few weeks back and I really enjoyed it. Put it in the refrigerator, cooled it down and, and I, I just really I liked it. It's got all of the uh, omega-3, uh, it's got 2,800 uh, milligrams of omega-6, it's got all 10 essential amino acids, it's got 4 uh, grams of digestible protein, essential vitamins A, B12, D, E, riboflavin, and folic acid, which is very important. These and vitamin uh, Bs are important. The essential minerals, magnesium, potassium, phosphorus, iron, and good old zinc. So I got to tell you, it's, it's, it tastes good, and it's good for you. You know what? How about that? The, and then we have the ginger yep. and hemp granola. That's a new one out there. I just found uh, out in a health food store, ginger and granola. You know, we just buy this stuff out there once I see it and bring it on the show here so you folks out there know about the diversity of products that are available out there. And so uh, go out there and sample some hemp products. If not these, try some others. You'll be amazed at how good they are for you. You know, we were talking about smoking and how, like, Henrik, you didn't like smoking because you got bronchitis. Well, like they've actually shown, well, you do like it, but you don't like the bronchitis. <laughs> right. But they've shown that people, recent study that from Dr. Donald Tashkin of UCLA shows that if you smoke marijuana, you will live two years longer than someone who never smoked anything at all. Amen. Well, so I must have about four years then. You're up you just on never the know. You're up on the curve. You could be right. Hey, we have another caller. Hello, it's caller. You're on our show. Hi, Paul and Tim. It's Kelly. Hello, um, my husband Kelly. and I came down last week and watched the show live and went to the after party. And just did you enjoy it. that? We did. You know, Good. it was uh, really nice. You guys watching you on TV, you have no idea what you go through to produce this hour show. So <laughs> you don't really see all these guys behind the camera and all exa that. Well, there's so much going on, Paul. I have no idea how you maintain focus and just, you know, read all the things you have to read and convey and take the calls and all that stuff. So, wanted Practice. to take a good job. Thank you. Thanks. I appreciate that. And Tim, love the CD. You've got to come out with another. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Um, hey, I just wanted to go along with what Henrik was saying about um, really trying to maintain a professional, you know, positive attitude with the whole um, marijuana march. And I think the hardest thing for me sometimes is, you know, we have the global petroleum type things that we just talked about, but you also have sort of the, you know, hippie, tie-dye, reggae style, you know, just sit around and, and get high and not do anything with your life. And we really have to focus on the medicinal purposes of this medication yeah. and, when you see and the well, industrial ones are pretty darn good too well the point is we're not the, this whole movement is not filled with hippie tie-dyed those sit are around the ones and that do are more nothing. likely to come out is that's um, that's exactly well, right that, i think need real support that's what we all yeah. retroactively cause, back all to saying. when it comes mm -hmm. time to celebrate mm -hmm. but and the fact is most of the people that are coming in through the clinic and i talk to these people every single day is that they're not they've got jobs uh they're professionals they're carpenters they're business people uh, they're every single person that you see walking down the street is represented in this movement. Um, but when it comes time for celebration, we all get our tie-dyed t-shirts out that fit great when we were 16 and weighed 135 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. And uh, so what I'm just trying to p point out is that this really does c cut across all socioeconomic lines. It's this true. This is about health and this is about human beings. This is not about how much money you make or what neighborhood you live in or That's what right. zip code. Exactly. So I just wanted to, you know, go along the same lines and just, you know, invite everyone to, you know, just dress up one layer more than they normally would for really portraying the cause for what it should be. There you go. And, and um, dancing in the streets is great, no matter what yeah. you're wearing. Exactly. So just wanted to say good job and Thank you, Kelly. Up and we'll uh -oh. Thank you.
That's uh, very you, excellent but point. I appreciate that, Kelly. And I hope well. you and our other viewers will know you can come down here to our TV studio, and we have a live audience here. Any night you can come down, and we have an after-show party after every well, any, show. Any Friday and that's night. That's lots of fun. You can always right. find out. Every Friday night. Did I say what I said? Uh, but any Friday night, our show is live at 8, and we're at Studio 6 at the corner of Tillamook and Williams, just about a half mile from the studio for our after show party. And we ask for donations at the door there to help cover the costs of the building. But uh, you are welcome to come down even if you can't make a donation. That's Studio 6 at the corner of Williams and... Tillamook. But it's I number six you, Tillamook. If any of our friends come down from Seattle or from Denver just for the party, we will let you in for free because you put out so much effort, yeah. I promise. Now next week we're gonna have an exciting show. I know we've got some people from the Los Marijuanos band will yes. be here. Yes. yes. It's gonna be the show just before the march. Los Marijuanos will be here. Uh, we'll have Madeline Boy Martinez, Abe Cortez is gonna be coming down from Seattle. He's helping get our show on up there, so uh, next week will be an exciting week to be around. Also, I want to remind you out there that if you are a medical marijuana patient and you need help in growing or more information about medical marijuana, THCF and our Cannabis Resource Center has classes for medical marijuana patients that you can take every Wednesday night. So just check in at our uh, office or our website to find out about those classes. There's a little bit more information about them there. and. Uh, again, tomorrow there is a medical marijuana cardholders meeting at the corner of Southeast 49th and Hawthorne at Mount Tabor Pub. That's Southeast 49th and Hawthorne, Oregon Normals cardholder meeting for medical marijuana patients is taking place. And there will be a spokesperson. I think the director of Oregon's medical marijuana program will be there to talk about changes in Oregon's medical marijuana law that take effect uh, coming uh, July 1st. We're also uh, gathering more hemp stock volunteers and uh, stay tuned for more information on that. You can pick up our newspaper at the library. We have a new uh, handbook that uh, Oregon Normal and THCF has produced in conjunction. Uh, Henrik's holding one of those. Maybe we'll get somebody to show that. But finally, I want to talk about the folks out there that need medical marijuana but haven't been able to well, well, hold it. We got a studio member who has a question. Hey, it would, AJ. It would be really nice if everyone could just invite five people to march in the million million marijuana march. That's a very good point. Yeah, we should build our numbers this year. Bring your friends. Bring your friends' friends. Come on down to the million marijuana march. It's going to be. You want to be there no later than 11:30 at Pioneer Courthouse Square here in Portland. Uh, the march starts right at high noon, so if you get there afternoon, you'll be waiting an hour for the march to come back to Pioneer Courthouse Square. But we have an exciting afternoon of music that will be going through till about 7 o'clock next Saturday. And next week's show, we'll have the, the uh, band Lost Marijuanos here on the show. There's our poster. Finally, if you or a loved one has the chronic pain, chronic nausea, uh, gastrointestinal ailments like Crohn's disease, GERD or IBS, neurodegenerative conditions like Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, spastic conditions like multiple sclerosis or even asthma or a seizure disorder like epilepsy, or you have cancer or AIDS or glaucoma, we can help you get a medical marijuana permit all across the western United States in Oregon, Washington, Colorado, Hawaii, California and now in Nevada too. So you can call our office, our Portland number is right there on your screen for a physician referral. We have dozens of physicians across the West that can help you. Call us at 503-235-4606. That's 503-235-4606. If you're up in the Seattle area, our clinic's in Bellevue, but you can call us at 206-878-1701. That's 206-878-1701. If you're in Denver, and I understand this is the most popular cable access show in Denver, just as it is here in Portland, I'm proud to say, the number of our Denver clinic is 303-403-9996. That's 303-403-9996. For our new clinic down in Riverside, California, and Southern California people, call 951 782 
9898. That's 951 782 9898. Now, if you're outside those major metropolitan areas, we have a toll free number. You can find out about our clinics in Nevada, in Hawaii, throughout California, Oregon, Washington, and Colorado. Call us at 1 800 723 0188. That's 1 800 723 0188. Hey, I want to thank Henrik for coming on the show here again. Always thank a good you. time. And thank you, viewers, for watching. Tune in next week. And remember to help us restore hip. Thank you.